In this video, I'm going to explain to you why your Facebook ads get rejected. Hey everybody, it's Stuart McAdam here and welcome to today's video. Now, just before we get started, don't forget to smash that like button if you find video tutorials and information sessions like this useful and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And with that said, let's get started. So no one likes getting their ads rejected on Facebook or Google or YouTube or any platform out there. You put all this time into sourcing the right content, uh, creating good graphics and images and videos, and for some reason that's just not good enough for the Facebook platform. And we're gonna be looking at the top reasons why ads get rejected and what can be done to remedy that problem. So let's have a look at things. First one is the URL. You wanna be very sure and very certain that the URL that you're placing into the ads is the correct URL. Make sure that you copy and paste it directly from the landing page and you bring it across in a way that it is accurate and 100% you know, guaranteed to work. And you can do that by testing it. Make sure that your ad isn't turned on and going live into review before you have tested the URL. And that is one of the easiest ways you can save yourself a lot of stress and hassle later on because if Facebook puts a mark against your ad because the URL isn't working, then it's very often a rookie mistake. And if that page doesn't exist, make sure that you have created a page with that URL. If the page is down, make sure that you know when it's coming back up. So you can pause your ad immediately and get the page up and running again and then request a manual review so that your ad can go live. It may also be down to your website having dodgy backlinks or one of the more sinister ones, which is right up at the top, and that is you are cloaking a PDF or a Google Doc or some other different document that is really not gonna sit well with Facebook. Facebook wants to have a proper established website page for traffic-based ads, and they want to have it open and transparent. So if you try using all these cloaking links, Facebook is gonna catch you out. And I'll just give you a little bonus tip now. That's one of the reasons why advertising Facebook groups has become very difficult now, even if you're using platforms like Bitly to try and disguise your links. And I've personally found that with one of my clients um, whose group I used to promote quite frequently, but nowadays it's you know almost impossible to do that. Second reason is deceptive offers as well. And I'm gonna give you a perfect example of one which uh, made waves a few years ago, which was the uh, Fire Music Festival. And the biggest thing about the Fire Music Festival is that they showcased um, this, which is sort of having fun in the blue waters, riding on jet skis, having this amazing concert on Pablo Escobar's um, island. And the reality was they got army tents, a music stage that wasn't even set up properly, um, terrible food, in a very sort of obscure location and it just was a complete disaster. So that's the second thing you've got to be wary of. If somebody is being sold a free ebook and they're being sent to a platform where you've got to sign up to some multi-level marketing subscription platform, then you can be guaranteed Facebook will keep an eye out on that and they will reject those ads and possibly even restrict your advertising as well. So be very mindful that anything that is used um, as an offer on Facebook, uh, make sure that parallels over and corresponds with what you are eventually offering uh, people that are visiting your landing page. Next thing you want to look at is understand that Facebook ads aren't easy. So if you are struggling with rejected ads repeatedly and you're finding that your account has been restricted multiple times, do send me an email on info at stuartmcadam.com and let's book a call so we can discuss how to get your ads back on track again. Now, on to the next one, it's sensitive topics. Now, a lot of these have a big relation to personal attributes and personality traits. It may be, you know, poor image choice, it may be, you know, sort of assuming things about people, you know, are you suffering from anxiety? Do you have a big nose? Do you, um, does your belly fat hang out um, over your shirt or your belt buckle? Uh, these sorts of things are often really not ways that you want to reach people. You're sort of wanting to provide a solution that is not does not feel like a direct attack on people. And the thing is as well that when you're talking about sensitive topics, people are often very you know conscious and emotional about these things already, and many are aware that they may have. Um, you know, a certain challenge that they're going through at the moment. So you want to be very 
sort of sensitive and delicate in addressing the topic as well. So make sure you leave any discussion about personal attributes out of it and always look to just talk about the solution that you offer and how it's a positive thing. And one of the best ways that I've heard about that recently is talking about the difference in calories. So 2,000 calories of oil is not the same as 2,000 calories worth of salad, for example. And that there's a lot more nutritional value in eating having 2,000 calories of salad than there is having 2,000 calories of oil. And I'll give a big shout out to Alaric Hick for um, his YouTube training which brought that um, discussion up. So coming back to the sensitive topics, make sure that you've got a good image choice selection and that you're not directly um, going after people who may have um, certain you know, sort of challenges or physical attributes or, or even sort of like um, psychological um, struggles. Uh, make sure that you keep it focused on the solution. So a good example of this is to talk about, you know, we provide tailored eating plans for people who are wanting to look and feel their best. Rather than saying, are you overweight? Are you struggling to shed those pounds? Um, contact us today for a free eating plan consultation. That is the fastest way to get your ad rejected. Try to keep it as broad based. Try to focus on the solution. We provide tailored eating plans for people wanting to enjoy delicious and nutritious meals and not go hungry. So moving on to the next topic, the language and the grammar is terrible in your ads. And you don't want to look unprofessional or illiterate. You want to make sure that anybody who is reviewing your um, reviewing ad and looking at it wants to see you as the person that can provide a, an optimal solution. And if you haven't taken the time to do 10 minutes worth of proofreading, 5 minutes worth of proofreading, whatever it is, depending on how long your ad is, sometimes it could be up to an hour, they are going to think, if this person hasn't put aside the time to proofread their ads, they're unlikely to be able to help me in the way that I need it, which may be quite a bit of help. And very often, it might just be that. And especially if you're selling high ticket offers, it's going to require a lot of time and investment into the person. So I'm going to leave it there for today's video. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Those are the top reasons why ads get rejected. And once again, if you found this video useful, please consider giving it a big thumbs up with that like button down below. It'll really help me with YouTube algorithm and reaching more people with these videos. And consider subscribing if you haven't already. So with that said, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.